Hello everybody, Kyle here from Web Dev Simplified. In this video, I'm going to be going over the null object pattern, which in my opinion is one of the easiest to understand and implement design patterns out there. I'm going to be talking about what it is and the different scenarios you should be using it in, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to be going through an example of me converting some existing code into code that uses the null object pattern, so make sure you stick around until the end. Let's get started now. In order to talk about what the null object pattern is, we first need to talk about the scenarios that you would want to use this pattern in so we can better understand why this pattern is being used and how it works. Essentially, the null object pattern is going to be used any time that you have a null object being returned, so the keyword null in a programming language such as JavaScript being returned. So normally when you do that, you have to check if something is equal to null before you actually access the different properties on that null prop object because if you access a method, for example, on a null object, you're going to get a null error being thrown in your code, which is something you don't want. So you need to have a bunch of if checks in your code to check to see if something is equal to null or not before you proceed to use the rest of the code. The idea behind the null object pattern is that you create an object that you return instead of null that has the exact same signature, so the same properties and the same methods as the object you would already be returning from that method and it'll just have default values for all these different properties and methods. So now, instead of having to check for null every single time, and then if it's null, do something, and if it's not null, do something else, you can just treat the object that's being returned from this method, for example, this null object, as if it was just a normal object of that same type. For example, if you have an item, and an item may or may not have an image, so when you get the image of an item, it'll either be null or it'll be an image, you would have to check every time you use that image before you did anything with it. You'd have to check if it's null, and if it's null, show some default image, for example, or if it's not null, then just show the image itself. But if you're using the null object pattern, this image property will just return a null object of the image, which would just be a default image, for example, that you would be displaying instead of the actual image. So every time you got the image of an item, you would return this null image which would act exactly the same as a normal image object, but it would just have default values, such as a default image that it would be displaying instead of the actual image of the item. A common place that this is used is with user accounts because many websites have an option for you to sign into an account. And if you're not signed in, you're being treated as a guest user. So it'll show that you're a guest maybe in the corner of the display of the website, and you'll have certain permission levels where you can access some things, but not other things, because you're only a guest and not signed in. So let's take a look at an example of where we have a user system where we will have guest users and actual users that are signed in. I just have a simple script open up in Visual Studio Code with a user class here at the top, and this user has an ID and a name property that will be accessed, as well as a has access method, which returns whether or not this user has access to this certain criteria. And in our case, this is just going to be if the name is equal to Bob. I then have a list of our two users here. User number one is Bob, and user number two is John. And then finally, a method that is going to be getting a user, given an ID, and it'll just find the user from this list based on the ID that we pass this method, and it'll return that user, and if it can't find that user, it is going to return null. Then, down here, I'm going to be printing that user based on ID. So you can call print user, give it an ID, it'll get that user from the ID, and then down here, It'll get the name of the user and print saying hello name, but if the user does not have a name, for example, this user does not exist, it'll just print guest. And then down here, it'll check if the user has access or not, and then print whether they have access or not. And this is using not the null object pattern. And as you can see in the comments here, there's quite a few problems with this. First of all, we need to explicitly tell the console.log to print this extra name of guest if the user is not logged in. And every time we either print or display the user's name, we need to put this check where we check if it's null and then tell it to print guest, which means we have to always make sure we type guest exactly the same in all of these different locations. And if we ever want to change this guest default name to something else, we have to change it everywhere else in our code, which is a terrible thing to do because it's so easy to miss a single place where it's used. And it's very hard to find that error if you do make that error. It's also very easy to forget to check for null for the user 
And then you start to get weird things where you may return undefined as the name, which never looks good, or you'll just throw an error where your site will crash. Same thing down here with the user has access, we need to check first if the user is null and if they have that has access property on the user object before we can actually call it. Otherwise, we're going to get an error. And this will happen a lot and we will very easily forget to do this null check, which again means that our website could error out and completely crash for our user, which we do not want. So let's click look at how this code actually functions by calling this print user function with the different IDs of the users that we have. So if we just call print user and we call it, for example, with a user ID of one, which is the first user on our list of Bob, you'll see that it prints, hello, Bob, you have access, which is exactly what we want. If we then want to print with our second user of John, you'll see that it says, hello, John, you're not allowed here. And that's because John's name does not equal Bob. So then if we print a third user, which is going to be a user that does not exist, you'll see it prints, hello, guest, you're not allowed here. And that's because down here in our code, we have all of our different null checks, checking to make sure if we have a null user to treat it in a special case by printing out guest as the name and to make sure to say that they don't have access instead of calling a function that doesn't exist on that null object. So what we want to do is we want to remove all the different null checks that we have throughout our code here by using a null object pattern. So what we want to do is we want to convert this code to be using a null object that gets returned from this get user function up here instead of just returning null. So the first thing to do that, we can just create this null object class. And this null object class is going to be very similar to our user class. So we'll just copy our user class, paste it down here. And instead of calling it user, we're just going to call it null user. So we know that this is a null object. This is a very common thing to do with the null object pattern by prefixing the name of the class with null to say that this is the null version of the object we're trying to represent. And our null object is not going to take any ID or name because it's just going to have some default properties. We'll give it a default ID of negative one. And then the name is guest. Since that's the name we are trying to print out down here, we want guest to be our default name. And a guest user will never have any access on our website. So we're just going to return false for them having access to anything. Now, with that taken care of, all we need to do is instead of our get user function, if we don't find that user, we just need to return a null user instead of an actual user. So we can just set a user variable here to what we find from our users.find. And if that user is null, so if we don't actually find any user inside of that list, all we need to do is return a null user. And then if we do find a user, for example, so if the user does exist, we then just want to return that user. So now this get user function takes care of the null check itself. And now we never have to check if the user is null anywhere else inside of our code. So if we scroll down here, we don't actually need any of these other checks here. We can just instead print the name of the user from the user variable we got here from our get user function. And same thing down here, we don't need to check anything about it being null. We can just check if the user has access, it'll say you have access or you are not allowed. So now if we go into our browser here and we run this print user function, so we say print user and we give it an ID of one, for example, which as we know is our user Bob, who will have access due to this function. If we run this, you see it says, hello, Bob, you have access. If we try to do print user and we do two, which is going to be our John user. It'll say, hello, John, you're not allowed here. And then finally, if we try to print with user three and in our array, we don't have a user number three. So it'll default to that null object of guest. And if we run that, you'll see it says, hello, guest, you're not allowed here. And that's as easy as the null object pattern is. It really only requires you to add one extra class or object to your actual code. And then instead of returning null, you return that null object that you created and it saves you from having to do all those extra null checks throughout all of the rest of your code. And instead, you only have to do that null check once when you're actually getting the object itself, and then you can either return the null object or you can return the actual object that is being found. And I have all of these different code examples on my GitHub page that you can view, which is linked in the description and my pinned comment below. So make sure you check that out if you're interested in dissecting this code in more depth I have a bunch of comments in there explaining how everything works. 
And if you're still confused after looking at all that, please make sure to leave a comment down below asking me any of the questions that you guys have problems with. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something about the null object pattern, and I hope this whetted your appetite a little bit for wanting to learn more about how you can create cleaner style code that'll save you a bunch of headaches in the future. And if so, make sure to check out the rest of my design pattern videos coming in the future. Thank you guys again for watching this video. Have a good day.